Willie Sayer is in one of those pictures who later helped develop the high-power klystrons for ultra-high frequency stations and for the linear accelerator down here in, in uh, Stanford University. He left Dumont after he developed these transmitters and worked on the big power klystrons for, for the uh, nuclear research work down at Oak Ridge, for example. I've been in there with him on that. Anyway, Willie and I and, and two or three others packed up a little bus in my car and left on an early Monday morning to go to Washington, D.C. We had a suspicion that the war was just about over. We'd been active in the Pentagon with people down in Washington on military stuff. So we got down there Tuesday morning. Washington didn't have any place for us to rent. We went to the Harrington Hotel, whose owner was a radio ham. We said, have you by any chance got a room where we can start a television station in Washington, D.C.? He said, 12th floor's got a couple of old storage rooms up there. Take a look. So Willie and I went up. said, fine, except the wall out. It won't run a transmitter very well. We had two transmitters, one for sound, one for picture, two antennas, because we hadn't learned to diplex them into one antenna in those days. So I said, could we take a look in the basement? We went down there and found some... DC cables from old DC elevators that had run the elevator system been modernized. Those cables been abandoned. I said to the man that owned the hotel, I said, can we use those cables to bring better power up to the 12th floor? He said, sure, go ahead. Well, come Wednesday afternoon, that was a day and a half, I said to Willie, I said, Willie, when do you think we'll be ready to go? I think I better go across the street to the FCC and get a license. So I wander over and see Curtis Plummer. I got his picture right over there on the library table. I said, Curtis, we've had an application for an experimental station down here for some time with you, but now we're ready to apply for the license for that station. Oh, Tom, you'll have to have a letter explaining the benefits to the public of you having an experimental station. I said, Can I borrow your typewriter? I typed out a letter for him and signed it and handed it to him. I said, Is that all right? He said, Yeah, that's all right, Tommy. I said, When do you think you'll be ready? I said, tomorrow? He says, okay, you'll have a telegraph authorization to proceed. One day for a license for a television station in Washington, D.C. So what happened at that station? The next day, Bill Roberts was our attorney down in Washington. He was there, Willis there was there, and I was there. We had a camera with a slide in it, the test pattern. You see a copy of the test pattern over in the library. And we would project that slide, and then I said, heck, that's not up to date. So I took one of the slides, we had several, I scraped the emulsion off and wrote with a big black pencil, war is over, on there. And we projected that picture out to the general public. We thought the general public. And we were on the telephone, on the microphone with the sound channel saying, if anybody's watching, please call in the phone number so-and-so and so-and-so. Pretty soon we got a phone call, a reply. It was the Naval Research Laboratory had been looking around for crazy signals that weren't on the air normally. They'd found us and were listening in on us. And I said, fine, we're on the station now. We've got one customer. 